Well, this is Andy Keller. I'm the Director of Worship at Trinity Reformed Church in Orange City, Iowa, and I want to show you how we use Ableton Live, uh, and more specifically, uh, how we're using it in worship and how we set all of this up. Uh, this is going to be used as a training tool for, for some of our interns and all those things, but if you're just getting started with Ableton Live and trying to know um, how to use it, different ways that churches use Ableton to supplement their, their worship, uh, this might be a great place for you to get started if you're, if you're just learning. Uh, so one thing that you'll notice is that this is Ableton Live. It's a program, it's a DAW, a digital audio workstation, very similar to other DAWs you may have worked with. Uh, the main difference is that Ableton uh, has two specific modes, this horizontal mode and uh, which is more similar to uh, your, your normal kind of DAW that you might be used to working with, and then this vertical uh, mode where you have your, uh, you can stack loops, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But for this lesson, we're going to show you how to do an initial setup um, to have clicks and cues lined up in your, uh, for, for getting started with Ableton. So, um, what we'll do is we will start with a template that we've created uh, in Ableton and that gets us started with all the tracks and uh, all the things lined up as we need to. And as uh, this comes in, you'll, you'll notice that this top track is called Click, which is just the metronome that we're hearing in our ear. Right, That's a MIDI track. And the other one here is this Q track, which is kind of a guide to tell us where to go. Chorus two, three. So uh, the click and the cue will get started with having these in because we have that on every song. And what we'll do is we'll bring in a song uh, from from uh, just an MP3 to use for us as a guide as we build this. So this is a song, uh, Carrie Job's Forever. And we'll bring it in just an mp3 and here it's rendering on the bottom and we're going to use this uh, this mp3 to help build our our clicks and our cues that's the first thing that we need to do with every song that we're using ableton live on so it's almost finished here and the first step is to make sure that you line up your your tempo uh, your tempo, your this is your master tempo in Ableton in this song, with the timing and tempo of this, uh, the MP3 you're bringing in. So you'll see here that this has about 72, we'll round up to 72 BPM. So let's move our, uh, I took warp off, we'll show why that's important in a second. But we'll bring this up to 72 and see if that aligns with what we have. Pretty good. Let's go later in the song. Let's go further. And that'll be a good test is if the song remains lined up further into it, um, then you know that your, your click is on. So warp is a awesome feature in Ableton because it allows you to take this audio segment and speed it up to slow it down. Um, so, and I can also change the key. So this song, uh, if we're doing it in a different key than the recording in, I can transpose it uh, by steps, up a step, So we can we can uh, make sure that that lines up with the things that we're playing. Uh, we can also adjust specific parts to line up. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll take this outline of forever and we will cut this MP3 down to match the order we're gonna do. So this has uh, the the very long uh, kind of a spoken word uh, scripture thing in the middle that we're not going to follow. We're just going to do the song uh, kind of more as a standalone 
uh, part of worship. So what we'll do is we'll go through here and it's very easy to cut out different sections. It kind of aligns to measures here and you can highlight them and delete them and move them together and it's, it's very simple. So we'll wanna make sure that the order that we have uh, lines up with how we wanna do the song and then we're gonna go and change our locators and our cue tracks. So our locators just tell us where we're at in the song. And the reason we do that is because uh, that is really helpful in rehearsal when you're trying to stop and redo sections and go back and find, let's start at the bridge the second time. Uh, you need these little markers to kind of know where you're at in the song. So uh, we're going to align those up. So we'll listen to where the song starts. Here's our, uh, we don't start right at the verse, we start in the intro. So I will rename this intro, and uh, in this cue track, you will see uh, it says verse. Verse. And I'll move this up. Pre-chorus. Uh, to our, our, to our intro. intro. So now. Intro. Two, three, four. You see we're playing in time. That, that cue is correct. Okay, and this should be where the verse comes in. Right here. And so I will put this cue track here, which is verse. verse. And I can copy and paste these little uh, one measure uh, to wherever I need it. But now, verse, two, three, four. We have our cue verse, lined up two, with uh, three, how we have four. it. So that's the initial process for every song we need to start with. We're going to go through the rest of the song, make all of our uh, locators, cue tracks line up uh, with our guide, and we're going to make sure that our guide is cut down to the order that we're going to do this song. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll catch up with you later to show you how you uh, start writing parts or pieces to your song.